about when uh, when she told you that we weren't going to be coming back and you made that kind of groaning noise. That's what my mom says every year when I tell her I'm not going home for Christmas on the telephone. And uh, anyways, I don't know why I'm telling you this story. It doesn't even have anything to do with the next song. But um, but I'm going to tell it to you anyways. Did you just light yourself with the title of Gifted Storyteller? <laughs> oh, oh, I thought I, I interpreted that as you saying that you're a gifted some would say, Some would say that I'm a gifted storyteller. <laughs> Apparently, Balcony 3 does not agree with this, but I... Oh, Jesus. Who would... No, they were going in down here about oh. Balcony 3. Oh my god, I thought Balcony 3 was booing, and I was like, who the fuck are you going see? They're waiting for like they're waiting. You guys are, you guys are waiting for the fire, for the firewalkers and the jugglers after the set. Um, how is Balcony Three? How is that up there? I guess your Balcony Two really is. It's like heaven up there. Um, how is? Are you guys okay on the balcony? Yeah, good. Good. Fine. All right. Good. All right. Anyway, so this. The story kind of got a little off track, but basically the story is. Oh uh, no! Then you're a gifted storyteller. Right, I'm gonna wrap it back around to the to the Let's story. Let's say the gift of getting me back on track and making them think. How about the gift of you not talking on the microphone while I'm talking? <laughs> People in London love a fight, eh? Hey? <laughs> Punch each other in the face. Super fun. Oh, be the first time. This now. Wow. So she went from being a gifted storyteller to calling out the third balcony and then just accusing Londoners of being violent. <laughs> uh, the gift is magic. <laughs> Use your gift again, Sarah. What else can you pull out of that? Why don't you submit your old and tired and you're just, you're just wasting time on taking it down? Anyways, fuck. I don't know what to tell you now except for that. Okay, I'll tell you. I don't know what I can tell you. Um, I recently took a tumble. Uh, down a set of stairs, and uh, and, I, and I had to go see a physiotherapist today. I don't know how, by show of hands, have any of you ever seen a physiotherapist? Woo! Um, I feel uh, I feel like um, I had to see a physiotherapist twice this week. Today was very civilized. Uh, the woman was actually in an office, and she had one of those ultraviolet sound machines that they. Push the, they put the sound waves into your muscles and whatever. But the first time I went to see a physiotherapist was a couple days ago, and he just wore shorts and like nothing else, like no shoes and no shirt, and he smelled very primal. Like he, it's been a long, let's just say this, even though I travel with a lot of boys, I haven't smelled a boy smell primal probably since I was in high school, and um, since I came out and gay. And, um, and so, most intimacy I had had with a man since I was like 17. He was like, he was like topless in shorts on top of me, cracking <laughs> my back. And I was like, I was like, do I love you? <laughs> I'm in love with you right now. I think I'm straight. <laughs> and it was so weird because I was in this, and this is what I realized, was that it had nothing to do with gender or sexuality. It just had to do with the fact that I was in an extremely, absurdly, tremendous amount of pain, and I wanted him to fix it, and he was, and so I loved him. <laughs> in a way that I have loved a half-naked man in shorts sitting on top of me since ever, since I was Not that that happened when I was 